A flamingo is on my list of suggested subjects that my patrons have given me, so this week I found some time to get one painted. I painted this flamingo before a few years ago. It's a fairly detailed and tight painting where I painted practically everything I saw. Here on the neck I've used some salt to create some texture. I quite like this painting but I wanted to paint it with less detail and I wanted to include some softer areas where the eye could rest. I washed this painting in in a similar way to the goat that I painted last week. I wet the background and the subject at the same time which allowed the colour of the flamingo to drift off into the background. I did a graphite study first. That helped me to work out all my different edges. And then I did a colour study. I wasn't keen on the green that I used here, so when I painted the main painting, I didn't put that on. The photograph that I used came from wildlife reference photos. It was taken by Evelyn Harrison. That pretty orange that I used on the flamingo was Daniel Smith's Pyrrhal orange and the paper that I used was Arsh Cold Pressed watercolour paper. It was 300 GSM in weight and I stretched it before I used it. So here's that gorgeous orange that I used. That's Pyrrhal orange. I've wet the head and the neck of the flamingo with water. I've also wet the paper beside the head just here and also beside the neck just here. When I paint the paint on, the orange flows off onto the background and it creates those lovely soft lost edges that I'm looking for. I've also wet the background down here and that will give me a soft edge along the front of the flamingo. When this first layer dried, I used my eradicator brush to gently rub away some of the edges that I didn't like. The brush is wet, the paper's dry, I rub gently over the paper and I use a tissue to dab at the paint. So just here there's an awkward edge, so I rub the brush over it gently and that softens that edge. After that I started to wet the body of the flamingo and again here I'm going to take the water onto the background. What I want to do is get a wash of colour all over the top that I can build some detail on. I want areas of softness that will contrast with the hard edge feathers that I want to paint. While the paper is wet I paint on some more Pyrrhal orange. I use my large flat brush so that I can get the paint on there fairly quickly. This colour here is Permanent Rose by Winsor & Newton. Looking at that orange starting to dry, I think to myself that it's not going to be dark enough. So I drop a bit more pigment onto it to make it a deeper colour. I need to let that dry now. I've been painting flat on the table, so now I've got it tilted up so that the paint will flow down to the bottom of the paper and I can use my brush to take off the excess paint. That way I won't get any watercolour blooms forming on it as it dries. Here's the first layer dry and now it's ready for me to start adding some detail over the top. I want to deepen the colour on the head in places so I wet the area where I want to work but I put the water on a larger area than where I'll be painting. 
If I keep the paint away from the edge of the water, my paint edges will remain soft, which is what I want here on the head. This time I'm going to use some Scarlet Lake by Winsor & Newton. I paint that onto the wet paper and I let the water disperse the pigment. All I do is touch the paintbrush to the paper and I give the paint a little push to push it where I want it. Once I've got enough paint on there, I wash the paint out of my brush, I dab my brush on a cloth, and then I can use it to tidy up any areas that I don't like. Before that paint dries, I drop on another colour. This is Permanent Magenta by Winsor & Newton. I want it a bit darker on the bottom edge here. Now I'm starting to add some detail to the group of feathers on the body. I paint them in individually. I wet the feathers with water one at a time and then I deepen the colour at the base of the feather. Here I'm using permanent magenta that I used on the side of the head to deepen the colour there. Once I've got the paint on there I then take the paint out of my brush and use it to blend the paint gives me that soft edge where the orange meets the magenta. This one here I've wet with water and now I've got some permanent rose. Permanent rose is the colour that I used on the background when I did that first wash. And again here I've taken the paint out of my brush and I blend that paint up a bit and soften the paint edge further. I did the same thing here, I wet it with water, but this time I'm using Pyrrhal Orange. So I put the paint on there, wash the paint out of my brush, and then use it to pull it up a bit further and soften the paint edge. When I'd finished painting all of them in, I allowed them to dry completely. Now I've got a brush that's wet with some water, clean water. I'm painting over the top of all of them to soften my hard edges slightly. This lifts a little bit of pigment and softens any dark edges that I don't like. Then I dried that off and now I'm re-wetting this bottom section. I want to start to paint some of those soft fuzzy lost feathers in the background. I want to do that on wet paper. So this is permanent rose again. I paint that along the edge of the other feathers and then I'll pull it down towards the bottom of the paper to create some lost feather shapes or loose feather shapes. Now I'll start to pull that paint down and create some feather shapes. Here I've got Pyrrhal Orange again. I'll do the same thing. And then I wet the paper further up. I've got some more permanent rows here. And this is Pyrrhal Orange again, pulling it out to create some little loose soft feather shapes.
when I do this I leave some of that lighter underwash showing I don't completely cover it with these darker colors Can tidy up the edges of some of those feathers while I'm at it. And then I wet the paper up further. I haven't wet the feathers that I painted earlier, I've only wet around them. This is permanent rose. And now I've got some Pyrrhal Orange. Pyrrhal Orange here for the shapes. Another permanent rose again. And that gives me all those soft, loose feathers and it gives me a bit of movement in the painting as well. And then I paint on some a bit higher that come off the body. And these I'm painting on the wet paper as well. Then I started to paint in the beak and the eye. I mixed some black from Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. I'm painting that on wet paper here. I didn't like the way the orange paint ended abruptly in front of the flamingo. So I've wet that area with water again and I'm going to add a bit more paint there. And again here I wet a larger area than where I need to put the paint. Then I get some more Pyrrhal Orange. I paint that on. I've actually wet into the head of the Flamingo as well. And that way I can take the paint into there slightly and I won't get a hard edge forming. Once I've got the paint on there, then I take the paint out of my brush and I just blend it softly. Just push it where I want it. I fiddled with the beak a bit more and I darkened a few colours here and there. I left the painting overnight so that I could look at it in the morning with fresh eyes. I fiddled a little bit more and then I decided that I was done. And there it is. I quite enjoyed painting this one. I think it took me probably about four hours all up to complete it. That's not including the graphite study and the colour study before though. I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've spoken about Skillshare before. It's an online learning platform with thousands of classes on lots of different topics. If painting is your thing, there's plenty of painting classes. Not only painting in watercolour, but also painting in acrylic and oils as well. There's photography classes, classes on videoing and web design, and all sorts of other creative things. You might be interested in illustrating with ink. This class here by Jazza Brooks is a fabulous illustration class. Jazza is an artist, a YouTuber, and a TV presenter, and he's got a heap of information to share. His class is filled with lots of tips, tricks and techniques for illustrators. He takes you through the different steps of brainstorming, sketching, inking and then using colour. His class is called Mastering Illustration, Sketching, Inking and Colour Essentials. 
So this class is one of thousands of classes that you can join. I've published 11 watercolour classes on Skillshare myself and I've just started working on some ideas for my 12th class. I've done a graphite study of my subject and I've started playing around with a colour study. An annual subscription to Skillshare costs less than $10 US a month, so it's good value. If you want to explore Skillshare and see some of the classes on offer, I've included a link with this video. The first 1,000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you don't already. And I'll see you soon with a new video. Take one. <clears throat> a fli- a fling. A flingo is on my list of subjects. It's a fairly detailed and tight painting where I painted practic- <clears throat> I painted this flamingo before a few years ago where I wet the background and the subject at the same time and that allowed the colour of the... If painting is your thing, there's plenty of painting classes. If painting is your thing, there's plenty of pa painting plenty of painting thank you for watching please give this video a like and yeah do that